Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last few episodes, I've been building my fused frame factory, and it's taken quite a long time, with 254 machines now currently inside the premises itself. And then we have scores of machines outside of the area, in surrounding factories and that kind of thing, sending components into it now via rail. Today's an exciting one, because now with all the machines in place, and much of the logistics hooked up, we're gonna actually be turning it all on for the first time. And I gotta say, I'm kinda nervous. I haven't tested it. This has probably taken about 50 hours of just pure prep work so far, so I just hope it works. All right, so because in the last episode, I took you on a lengthy tour, which I recommend people watch, today we're just gonna jump straight into things by hooking up the final logistical floor, which should be quick enough. I think it's 12 manufacturers and 10 blenders. And then we're gonna power it all on floor by floor. So, let's begin. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen, you find me on the rail network right now, just outside the factory, staring at it, as it's obviously not done yet. The outer shell is beginning to take shape. I never really had a plan in mind for how it was going to look, but it's kind of coming together, although it is just a giant glass tower factory thing, I guess. Kind of looks interesting around the back, but we'll show that maybe a bit later. Let's just get flying over. So, one of the things that I've done in between episodes is obviously put on this outer shell, and one of the reasons for that was because I wanted to build the hypertube network I had talked about in the previous episode, which was a way to get up and down this place, because I was previously just using a jetpack, and it was taking a very long time. But now we've got the hypertube transport network, which is basically just a series of frame windows with tubes running up and down them, depending on what floor you're on. So, in total, there are seven floors. And I guess kind of a basement floor, there's a way to get outside to get down towards the sea level and over towards the gas extractors as well, if you wanted to consider it all part of the same place. So seven floors in total, we're on floor one, which is the train station. The red floors are basically the proper factory floors, and the blue floors are effectively the logistical floors. Of course, as I mentioned previously, blue for me is things coming into the factory, and red is things going out. So the red floors are the things where the machines are. They make things and they spit stuff out. The blue floors are feeding things in, if that kind of makes sense. So that's the color scheme that I decided to go with there. Let's hop on up to blending and manufacturing. So as we pass by the numerous logistical floors, you'll remember that I basically in the previous episode did all the logistics for the third floor, which is where the constructors, the refiners, and things like that were. I've now taken the time between episodes to do the logistics for the floor downstairs. Uh, not this one, but the one below the one I'm on now. Sorry, it's so confusing. So this is assembly, right? We did the assembly in the previous episode, right? We built all those assemblers, and then I just went ahead and did all the logistics for it as well now in between episodes. It's not as bad this time as it was the first time because I knew overall the layout I was going for and the amounts that I was dealing with made it much more simple. For instance, modular frames, these numbered machines numbered 8 to 1 or 1 to 8. The reason I have it 8 to 1 is because upstairs it's numbered like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I decided to reference it so it's feeding this way first if that makes sense or so this one's coming out first anyway it doesn't really matter but um yeah it's only doing 24 24 and 24 and so on so that gets us to 96 so no no like complicated belt work really needs to be done beyond just lots of belts because they all do effectively merge onto the same one that makes it a lot easier than of course the floor i did down below this one this logistical floor was a nightmare because there were so many things where it's like you need, you know, 1700 steel pipes and that means you're going to have to have multiple belts and they're all going to be fed up in different ways. So this was a bit of a headache. The one above, although it might look a little complicated, it's actually surprisingly simple to do. Um, all right, let's just take the hypertube network back up. So the logistical floors are all connected together. So if you're on a blue floor, which I am now, you can get to any other blue floor easily. And then you can go kind of up up one or down one if you want, kind of on the red things. That's basically how it works. So we'll head back up to the blending and logistics, uh, blending and manufacturing logistical floor, and we can get started here. So something else I didn't even mention that you may have noticed is that the blend... We'll actually just go up one more time. I've swapped the positions of these machines. The blenders are now on the right side for me, and the manufacturers on the left. I had it the other way around, but just by booting up SatisfactoryCalculator.com, I was able to select these machines, select these ones, and basically just move these forward 10 foundations and move these back 10 foundations, swapping their positions. And then I just kind of, you know, recolored the pattern on the ground, and that was fine. So hopefully they work okay, because they have just been raw... <laughs> I was going to say, I just brute force moved them. I raw dogged it, and I haven't tested anything, so I don't know if it's going to work. 
Uh, but this should be fine. So now we're also bringing up the gas. We're also bringing up the aluminum casing that is coming in from the train station, which we set up in the last episode as well. So we have 480, 480 there. I need a total of 800. So they'll be divided between their respective machines. We have uh, the three different gas pipelines, although I only actually need one of them. So maybe I'll do something with these in the future, or we'll send it down to the train station to send it out. Then we have steel pipes, 432. This is reserved in case I want to do something else, which I'll talk about later. I'm thinking that if we bring the radio control units into this factory, I can make the... I can't even remember what it's called, but I looked it up on the wiki. It's the first time I've actually looked ahead of where I'm at in terms of progression. I wanted to see what fused frames are actually used for. And uh, I've, it actually kind of escapes me now, but it's like a plasma box thing. Can't remember what it's called. You guys will probably know. Anyway, that thing can take radio control units, mix it with the fused frames, and make something else. So we, I've reserved space for doing it in future. Always a good idea to do that. And that way we have an even number of belts as well below. So when we're downstairs, it should look nice when we kind of walk around. All right, and then very last thing is we have the concrete coming from down this way. What else is this? Then the modular frames, etc. So let's get cracking. So we're going to be starting here first. These are all the outputs we have to, or inputs we have to do. So to get the ball rolling, I'm just going to switch to conveyor mark one, bring this all the way down to about there. And then from here, I've got a very simple little blueprint I called manufacturer splitter solution. And uh, we'll just bring this towards me here, lock it into place. And that'll be what we'll just do several times over. So now that that one's in place, Let's see how easily we can get the next ones down, because this can be a bit of a finicky thing. Again, when the update happens, switch it to blueprint mode. We can see our green line. I need to get some distance if I want to really line this up, actually, so I can see the roof. So is that it? That's lined up now with the things on the left. That looks good to me. Yep, that seems fine, right? So let's just keep doing that. We have two more times, and then after this, it should be easy, because they should just uh, connect in terms of their little green line will pop out and let me know where they need to be. Although sometimes that green line can be deceptive. Is this correct as well? I think so. Yep, looks lined up. Okay, one more time. And there's just three rows of this, so again, it should be quick. And once this line is powered, or um, connected up with belts, we'll actually turn the factory on, because I imagine it's going to take quite a while to make some heavy modular frames here. Uh, and then... We can do the legit, once we start powering on the floors, following things up, once these get their materials, then we can power on the blenders because they're going to take a while to get those heavy modular frames. So it'd be nice to get the, the factory rolling. It's going to be a rolling start, isn't it? So it'd be good to get that done. All right, so we look like we're lined up, I think. So we'll just grab conveyor lift one, bring it down, just hook all these in easily enough. Just make sure our spacing is correct with this. Perfect, eh? Looking good so far. The amount of times I've had to do this and I've gotten it wrong is, I would, I don't know, I'd, in some ways I'd love to know how much time have I wasted redoing things, <laughs> but at the same time I guess that would be a horrible number to know at this, you know. Alright, let's just connect these all up, so this is belt one, in you go. Now some of these might have to change their speeds, but we'll check that later. Alright, so they're hooked up. Try to stop moving so erratically. I feel like when I know what I want to do and I've got a plan, I kind of just go really quickly. And it can be a little bit, um, I know it can be kind of jarring for viewers if I'm like, <laughs> so uh, I'll try to bear that in mind. Keep doing that lately. I feel like when you just have a lot of repetitive tasks, you end up wanting to just go through it quickly. All right, so there we go. So that should be all of those guys hooked up, right? So let's just do that again now, several times over. So we have manufacturer splitter solution, but we can just look at that one. Well, actually, just to be safe, we should at least gauge where the first distance is of this thing. Let's pull this down to about there. And we'll put the first one down, so then we can just work off of that one easily. Alright, I'm just gonna delete that. So that's in position now. Sorry that I haven't hotkeyed this, but I'm just not going to now. Alright, so that's lined up. We're on blueprint mode. We'll wait for our green line. There she is. Are we looking lined up? We are. Good. All right, this is going smoothly <laughs> so far. Now we've got two green lines. What's up with that? Uh, it looks like we're okay, though. Just want to make sure. Yep, okay. Alrighty. 
I think that's fine as well. Looks like we are lined up. Alright, there's one more row to go, and then we'll just attach all the lifts. And then we'll hook up where the actual stuff is coming in from. Alright, so just simply activating blueprint mode, lining it up. It should be quick, pretty quick now. They're lined up, yep. Alrighty, good. So now let's just hook up all these belts. We'll do the belt work first. So we'll just start at the bottom here. Connect that in. Connect that in. And it's come pre-painted for me as well, as it is all an input bus, if you will. And then I can add on the signs and things like that later. People that said in the comments, they liked my little labeling system, which is nice to hear. I thought people were going to be like, oh, it doesn't make any sense. You should be doing this. But no, people seem to like it, so that's good. I did say be gentle, though. <laughs> All right, almost done. Man, the Minecraft music lately has got me really, really wanting to play some Minecraft lately. It's been a long time, and uh, recently saw some shader mods where I was like, oh, it looks so good. <laughs> and there's something extremely nostalgic about Minecraft for me. And for, obviously, for loads of people, I know. Right, so the thing is, I'm not actually sure which what we're going to send where. We'll just figure that out once we get over to those belts in a moment. And we have to do the outputs. We'll do the outputs after doing all the inputs, because then we can kind of decide where it needs to go. Ultimately, the outputs of this are... Half of them are going to flow over towards the blenders. Because you need mod uh, heavy modular frames to make fused frames. Wow, I can't believe I, I always get my spacing off, but it looks like we've done it first time here, which is good. Alrighty, there we go. I'll just redo this one just in case it wasn't done right. Oh man. So that's it. That's all of our inputs, <clears throat> excuse me, hooked up. So now we just have to figure out what's going to go where. So for the reason, by the way, I swapped the machines around, why I put the blenders over this side, is because this is where I have my gas and my aluminum casing coming in. And that's what those machines need. So I just thought it made more sense if they were going to be kind of out on this side. It made more sense just to move the machines rather than to try to figure out how to move these things and crisscross them over each other. So I think that's worked fairly well. Okay, so we have the steel pipes, 432, 120, 96, and then 264. That's concrete. Yeah, so I think with the biggest number, we'll keep the biggest stuff on the bottom and the slowest stuff up on the top. So let's do this. We'll just go... Uh, it's a belt of four. Yep, there we go. Mark four, 480. Now, because some of these are going to come out and travel will need to go left and right. What I'll probably do is send them forward and loop them around, if that makes sense. So we'll send them forward and then left. So what we got to do is go like this, go like this, one, two. They don't actually need to move forward too much, but everyone else pretty much will. And because I've just centered everything, it makes working with the foundations very easy. There we go. So all the inputs are going to travel to the left. I can actually hover on this bit area. Yeah, I can. Cool. So something else as well is like all the machines are now powered. They all have power switches gating them, though, from being turned on. So we'll turn, we'll do that rolling start and power everything on. And that way we get to travel around the entire factory and watch it all kind of come to life. That's the plan. So hopefully it all is hooked up to power correctly. Okay, so that was the steel pipes. They're going to travel along the ground. So let's just get belt mark four. We'll go forward about there. And then we'll curl like this. And then, yeah, we're going to just curl around. I might actually... Is that all right? Uh, yeah, curl around on this center of the foundation up that way. 
This way everyone's traveling together on the same belt. None of these belts are so big that they're going to have really issues with this. All right, so splitter, we're going to split this way first. Yep, and then we're going to need another one down here. And we're going to need four of them, right? So one, two, three, four. And they need to all just be stacked on top of each other. I think this will work. It's different than how I've done the other floors, actually, because we don't use splitters that much in the other places. They just usually go directly where they need to. Anyway, so mark four. There you go. In you go. Into your little buddy. And then you go along there. Okay, so let me check what the machine actually needs for steel pipes. They need 36. Uh, no, they don't. This one's overclocked. All right. It's overclocked. That seems like a high overclock. 12? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. 180%. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so this is 60. And then there's going to be... 33. So 33 times 3 plus 60. 159. So we need at least a Mark 3 belt. So I'll just put a Mark 3 belt along all three, even though they won't all three won't need it. At least it will keep it consistent that way. So instead of being a Mark 4 now at this place, you could just be a Mark 3. I'll just bring that all the way along the bottom. Now, I just realized that overclocked machine, it's taken more than 60, isn't it? So I'll need a Mark II elevator to take that one away. But all these ones can stay the way they are. So Mark III, in you go. Update these. Hopefully that's all right. They don't even need to be there at the end, thinking about it. You can chop them away at the end. All right, cool. Here we go. So that's steel pipes fed. Let's just double check that the thing that requires the overclocking, we have the correct belt going into it. So it's 60.75. So it's slightly just more than um, the Mark 1 belt, which is just 60, right? So we have to just make sure that we're able to feed that. So it's the very bottom here. It's the very closest one to us. All right, we'll just fix that then. So that's going to be a Mark 2. And it's only, that's the only example of that. So we should be okay. And it's 0.75. I think we would have survived without it. But if we want that peak efficiency, we got to get that number right. All right, man. Feeling good. So that's one recipe down or one um, resource down. I'll just wait for the autosave and then we move on to the next one. All right. We're good. So back here. So what do we have here? We've got um, industrial encased beams, EB, encased beams. Let's go like this. It's 120, so it only needs a belt of two. One two and then straight in we go yeah so I guess this needs its uh, little buddy everywhere we've got a little one of these that should be fine so they're gonna have to be stacked uh, three times over at least this one doesn't really need to be there, so I'll just get rid of that. <clears throat> and it's reserved in case they ever need to go up even higher, which they may do uh, if we ever deliver radio control units in here. All right, so there we are. Belt 2. Let's just continue this around. Inside it goes. And then this is going to be divided up between all these different machines as well, but I'll just, I don't know. Do we need to change the belts? Maybe speed one is probably enough, as long as this first machine, this will kind of tell me what we need. So it's gonna take 16 beams. Now it's not 16 times four, it's like 16 plus, the normal rate is 9.375. 9.375 times three. Yeah, so belt mark one belt is totally fine for all of these guys. So we don't have to update those belts at all. They're all good. All right, and that's uh, in case beams 
fed, as it were. So next one over is going to be modular frames. This will definitely be a Mark One belt when it gets to its machines. Um, so it's one, two, one, two. And that's going to be, how much is it? 96. That's a Mark II belt as well. See, super easy. Once you just have that, like, layout figured out, and you're working with the grid spaces and everything's evenly spaced, god damn, does it make life so much easier. But it took me a lot of trial and error to get to this point where I know that. <laughs> All right, so next up, that's just reserved for the future. The way of the future. And uh, this one is going to be concrete. 264. All right, so we can bring it with a belt of 270, Mark III. One, two, one, two, one, two. This one can go up even above that one. They don't have to be in a line or anything. I don't mind. A bit of staggering. And that way, the uh, stackable belts are just showing everything that's going into the same machines next to each other. Alright, just feed this all the way down. And then we can see what's going into every row. I'm assuming Mark II. So it's going to be the concrete 20.65. So 20.65 times 4 is 82. And then that one's obviously going to be overclocked to have an additional 17. So yeah, Mark II belt then. All right, great. So that's all done. We just have to go over to the next two rows and just get them uh, finished. All right, guys, I think that's it. That's our four ingredients all fed to this area. We don't have anything for the outputs yet, so we've still got to do that. Excuse me, we've still got to do that. And I just want to chop away these things because they'll end up just confusing me. There we go. Because nothing's going to come out of here again. I leave the uh, stackable pole thing there actually because it looks like it's suspending things, which is a bit nicer. All right, so there, there she is. Uh, let's just get rid of that and let's just put the other pole back in its position, just to be consistent. No point leaving it behind now. So it's got to be here. And then, do I have its color? No. So the colors I've used, we've got royal blue. I've called it royal blue, and then blue with white signs. So yeah, I'd have to um, go through all the connecting belts like this just to make sure that those ones are done. And then obviously the main bus needs to be painted in blue as well, but I'll just leave it. We don't need to be bothering with that now. It's just going to waste some time. And it's straightforward enough, at least for now. I'm not going to get too confused by it, I don't think. Um, so the next thing then would be making sure all of the heavy modular frames head out towards the correct area. And the good thing with this is they're all fitting on one belt. So what we can do is just go like this, bring it down to here. And yeah, merger facing away from me. So I just got to do that several times over. So let's just do the belts first. So the belts will just come all the way down. I might have to actually get rid of, reattach these belts, but for positioning, it's nice just to know where they are. I end up putting these mergers in the wrong place all the time. And I know that they snap in like the way they're trying to do. But I just don't like the look of that. <laughs> so we're going with the tougher option, which is uh, manually placing them like this. All right. So that's, those ones are in the correct position. There's still these ones to go. So let's just grab this. All 
All right. And then just plop these mergers back into position as well. All right, one more row to do, then we reattach the lifts, hook up the Mark 1 belt, and then at least we'll see the heavy modular frames coming out. I might just put them in a storage box or something for, for the moment. These will be painted red because they are outputs, not inputs. Oh man, so close. I'm, I'm excited, nervous at the same time. I mean, the worst, uh, I'm sure things will work, but it's just like, I hope things become efficient and I haven't forgotten anything so we can do it in one smooth go. But it would suck if I forgot something major and I just haven't thought of it at all. All right, so a little bit annoying. We got to just reattach these lifts now that the mergers are in place. Because you can't guarantee that they're going to work until if you don't attach, if you attach the, if you do it the other way around, you know. This is definitely a guaranteed attachment when it snaps in. All right, good. All right, four more to go, and then we just hook up these belts together. Excellent. All right. Yeah, I can't quite fly everywhere down here. I'll just keep it like this. So, Mark 1 belt is all it needs. We're doing 36 in total. That's the goal. All of this for 36 heavy modular frames. And then hopefully 16 fused modular frames. And like I said, I looked up on the wiki. I was like, what is this even needed for? Like, is it a space part or, or like what? And uh, again, I genuinely just can't really remember. See, I haven't hit the milestone yet where I can check in-game. I just know that I can make them. <laughs> um, but I did see it said something like, oh, if you mix them with radio control units, which is a factory we just made, we made a crystal oscillator and radio control unit factory, um, you can get the like plasma thing that's inside a cube. I just don't know the name of it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, that's sweet. So that's a relatively easy thing for me to do. And the rate, I can't remember exactly even the rate that it was done at, but it didn't seem that difficult because I'm going to be making 16 of them per minute. So it seemed like pretty, pretty doable. Um, it's so funny, like even now asking me, I don't even know how much radio control units I make per minute. I have to go back in my Excel documents or go to the factory itself and check. Uh, but either way, it seems like we can make that component pretty easy as long as I don't need a lot of radio control units for something else. All right, so there we go. So this is it, the output. So let's just make a storage box here as a sort of a temporary thing. Make it small. And slam that in. So there we go. So it's a bit of a... I don't know, it was maybe a bit chaotic the way I was moving around it, but it's all done now, right? So that's every... That's 12 manufacturers all hooked up now to the resources which are coming from downstairs. Um, the reserved slots are left empty. Yep, all good. And everything should be hooked up. So we'll find out if it's not, but I'm hoping it is. <laughs> so let's go. All right, so what we can do now is toggle off the final logistics, although technically I need to do them for the blenders, which we'll get to, but now we can go through the checklist, as it were. So we're going to deal with turning on the miners first, then the constructor and refinement floor, then assembly, gas release, petro-coke. Petro-coke. That can actually happen before the gas release. And this can happen after blending and manufacturing. Because gas release is only needed for the blenders. All right, let's begin. So we're going to hop all the way down. Oh, yeah, I should show this. This area I actually think is coming along nicely. It was one of the reasons I put the refineries on the edge was so that their chimneys could kind of poke out. I think that looks cool. Not done yet, though. Still a, still a bunch to do. All right. Oh, you know what? I just realized. Good thing I came here first. I don't think I've hooked this one up to power at all. Um, so we could just begin... The process there already. Damn, I don't think I've actually even got any power nearby. There's got to be some over here we can grab. Yeah, not sure how I left that um, by the wayside. I guess I know what I'll do. I'll do this. I've got power in here. All this power is going to be tucked away in a much nicer fashion uh, way. 
in the future. <laughs> we'll just drag this out towards its buddy. All right, so you're hooked up. So we still have to pull the levers to actually begin this process. Okay, so we're into starting up the factory. Now, we already played this music on the beginning of the episode, but I'm just going to open up Aria Math again because it's really, really good. How can you not? Alrighty, so... Um, Miners and raw resources. So one of the first ones then would be here. This is pulling the switch to make sure that the water extractors are powered on. They should be fine at first because I think these pipes are totally full right now anyway. But we'll begin this limestone node here. And then we'll need to get to the far side of the factory really quickly to do a limestone node that's pretty far out. Alright, so just as I had flicked on the machine to do limestone, I realized the sun was setting and that I'd be doing the tour in the dark. So I waited until the morning. The sun is just coming up now. I did a little bit more belt work for the blenders just to speed that process up when we know other limestone miners, which we can now turn on and begin the process of turning on everything bit by bit. So I'm nervous and excited. It's going to be fun. Let's go. Bonk. Alright, this is going to be a great way to do a, a tour of the factory. So our first bit of limestone is rolling now, 96 per minute. Flowing along this way. Try to hide the UI and I'll try to keep the camera nice and still so we get to soak in the sights and sounds of this factory that isn't fully up to scratch yet as we can see. Not everything's fully powered yet. But for the most part we're good. The machines should all be intact before we do the rest of the architecture. Alright, so we've got another miner over here. Another limestone miner to get to, uh, to get cracking on. Not going to be turning on every single miner, don't worry, but the ones that are far apart have their own little switches. So we should see, soon enough anyway, this will be where limestone will be traveling through, and they'll be rolling this way over to these ones, which actually, just thinking about it, I don't think I've ever hooked this one up to power or its little buddy over there. So this will have to be a quick, quick and dirty manual job. So let's just grab this one. fly over and say, there you go. <laughs> and again, there's inside here. So we'll just power those two on. But yeah, we can see the first bit of limestone's already flowing. So if we were to follow this, every belt should have limestone on it traveling in here and then one of them iron. Because this is an iron mine. All right, so basically on the right side of the screen, we have our, well, what do you call it? Task list, basically. Our order of operation. We have miners to power on first, then we're doing the floors. So here's our next set of miners. And this is going to basically power these two, two iron mines and copper in the distance, which is just out there, which it has its light on. And then the final miner is here. So this is the one I had powered on for a moment before realizing it was going to be in the dark. I'll we'll just put that back on. And then the water extractors and so on can be powered on from here. So the idea is that all of this should be able to go to a control room at some point and we can do it from there. So if we were to look at our resource map, we can kind of see what we've just done. We've turned on iron ore, copper ore, iron ore again. That's the petroleum coke and the aluminum casing coming in now. So we've got copper ore again, limestone. Oh, actually, this is out of date. Uh, one of these, anyway. Yeah, that one. Sorry, we don't use this anymore. We use um, regular smelters are just taking iron ore and turning it into that many ingots. So discount that. That's not actually happening anymore. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the raw materials, I guess, before we get to the more complicated stuff. All right, let's move up a floor. Should we take the stairs? No, we'll take the hypertube network, of course. So now we're going to move up to um, floor three, and this is going to be refinement and construction. All right, here we are amongst constructors, foundries, more constructors, and refiners. So each of these have their own little power switches. So one of the first things is having all that copper ore travel over now. They're going to be coming in here. So we should see these kick into action as well and get their water delivered. There we go. Water is flooding in, quite literally. Let's power these refineries too. If we wanted to, we could just take a quick hop downstairs. There, there's our copper ore traveling in right in from over there. 
Just coming up and over and then into all of these machines, being fed up to make some copper ingots, basically. These copper ingots are going to travel back out this way, back onto the main bus and head into the wire constructors. So this is one of my kind of rare red to purple to blue because it's actually a transitioning sort of resource. It doesn't go up a floor, it stays on this floor and turns into something else. Alright, let's make our way back upstairs. We're cooking. I'm seeing green lights. Alright, then if we want to make wire, knock all these machines on. Wire 1 to 15. We have our first batches of concrete heading upstairs. Things are working. Things are connecting. Let's turn on the foundries. These foundries are going to be doing steel pipes. So they're taking in that iron ore. Going to be mixing it now with the petroleum coke, which we'll have to hook up now just after I do this floor. And we'll get that all hooked up, and then these will be fed and make their steel pipes, which are made en masse. It's the highest volume of anything that this factory produces. I think it makes a total... Well, actually, the highest volume is steel ingots. We make 2,400 of them. All right, so that's all flowing. Let's just head up or downstairs just to connect up that petroleum coke that's coming in via the train. So we can actually get rid of the awesome sink and this one. That's not needed anymore, nor is this one. Should be able to fly here, I think. Now, this is kind of a nice way to let our machines get backfilled because they have power. Oh, no, I'm creating crates. Uh, let's just drop something for a moment. We'll pick that up in a sec. The petroleum coke. So we have to bring the coke to fit up onto this four lines of 480 each. So we're going to be dealing with this type of belt. Hmm. Well, let's start off simple. So. Yeah. You, sir, are going to have to rotate around. Grab you. Come out this way. Get rid of that. Yeah, the two crates are still okay. That's fine. Still have space in the inventory. It's just making sure. All right, so belt mark four. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. We're in business. A little bit of a hiccup, but no problem. Petroleum coke is now rolling. Now, if I can, let's just see if we can pick this stuff back up. I'll probably just delete some of the petroleum coke so we don't have to worry about it. Get rid of these belts that are just sitting here now. All right, good. Good, good, good. Is that it? And just pick up the stuff I dropped in the... Any other crate? Did I get the other crate? Looks like I did. I don't see it. I hate... I sometimes see screenshots from people and they've got like a million crates under compass. I'm like, how do you let that happen? You know, if I leave one down, I'm like, there's no way. Oh, something I just realized. I'll have to do that separately. This needs to go into a storage box first. Somewhere, right? I mean, ideally, before it joins onto this thing. Just because it stops flowing. Although we are actually feeding the machines a little more. We're giving them 480. They only need 450, so maybe it'll be okay. Anyway, but yeah, I'd like to give them a storage box. Obviously, that's the right thing to do. All right, let's continue. So if I was just to mark these things off, we've done now miners. We've done the construction and refinement floor. We have to head up to assembly. Let's just go up another... F uh, actually, we'll stay on this floor for a second. We can now maybe have a look at how busy this place is. So I'm, still, I'm seeing steel come down, and it seems to be backed up for some reason. And then it's traveling this way. So it seems like our... Oh, no, the constructors are live. Oh, I know the problem. That's fine. 
Didn't hook up hook up the rows. Now they'll be in future hooked up along the beam themselves, but this will get us all rolling as well. Now the volume is going to start really going. So let's see what we got traveling up on the things next to us. So the concrete is stopped, the wire is stopped, that's to be expected, but the steel pipes should start flowing now. There's going to be something like five belts taking them upstairs, most of them doing 300 each. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of movement, which is good. This is doing iron plates, the iron plates are rolling, good. Alright, let's go up the floor. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. So we got to power on the assembler floor. All right. Good. That's as easy as that. So let's just knock these things off. So we've done the petro coke. We've done the assembly. Next is bl turning on the blenders and the manufacturers. Some of that concrete is going all the way up. I'm just going to change the music really quickly because I feel like it's really chill when I'm excited by everything I'm turning on right now. So one sec. Just wanted to go back to Aria Math again from Minecraft. All right, we've seen some steel pipes rising all the way up and above us. None of the assemblers have fired anything up yet. We need to do the... Uh, yeah, I guess the blenders will be up next, so let's head upstairs for that. And then we'll just do a once-over on all these belts and just watch them all flowing for a bit. I'm happy so far, everything does seem to be working, but obviously it's going to take a while for the manifold to take effect before I can check out efficiency rates. Um, alright, blending and manufacturing. So we'll turn on the manufacturers, then we're going to hook up the rest of the blenders, and then we can check how everything's flowing. Alright, so if we were just to check one, they're getting their steel, they're getting their concrete already. How good is that? God, it's so quick. <laughs> oh my god, it's full. Obviously the concrete is running first. A lot of the concrete goes into use elsewhere, but some of it comes straight up here, I guess, in the end. Nice. I am but concrete, traveling along this belt. <laughs> Alright. So, this is what I was working on. Um, so, we're going to have pipes as well as regular inputs. I like the pipes to travel along the bottom. I know that they don't have to when it's gas, but it's just a preference of mine to do it that way. Alright, so I decided just to do that on my own. So, basically, the splitters are now hopefully in position. They're raised just above the concrete because uh, the pipeline is going to run underneath them. That's just the way I prefer to do pipes. Although... I guess they don't have to be that way, thinking about it, because there's gas. They don't matter if they're on the top or the bottom. We've now got concrete, steel pipes, and modular frames rolling. I haven't seen any encased beams yet, so don't know if there's a problem. Maybe we could trace that back and see. Do feel like encased beams take quite a bit to be made. Ah, they're being stalled here for some reason. This is a merger. This is its output. Is it not heading in correctly? What the hell is happening, man? <laughs> I don't understand. Is this not connected correctly? Get rid of the stilt. Alright, I seem to have fixed that issue. So basically, it seems like these conveyor poles were blocking the split, the merger inside. Because it was the belt is probably connecting just to that and not not to anything else and they weren't actually merging they seem to be merging now so it's a bit of a backlog as they chug their way out um, I thought maybe this line was taking a very long time to get their steel pipes like their efficiency seemed to be low but I think I should let it run for a little longer before I make any rash judgments it's basically because this is the tail end of a long belt of 600 so we can actually see there's a lot of um, steel pipes rolling around this way but I think that's why the inputs here are a bit slow for the outputs here, if that makes sense. So hopefully that's all sorted. It seems like just a just a little issue with in terms of how I did the conveyor poles underneath. Hopefully no problem. All right, let's go back up. Yep, so now that we have modular frames, encased beams, steel pipes, and concrete rolling on this floor, that means we are now making 
And I feel like I've heard one of them power on. We are now making our first heavy modular frames, of which we're aiming for 36. So let's just continue with the work over here so that the first frames can kind of come in and help out um, and start making fused frames. So this is ultimately what we're working with. Alright, so that should be all of the gas hooked up, and we might even start to see that Oh no, I haven't released the valves yet for the gas, so we'll do that last, actually, that should be fun. Okay, so, um, the very last thing then is just hooking up these belts correctly, so this should be fairly quick to do, I don't need to really fly to do it, I don't think. So we've got, hey, we made our first 15 heavy modular frames, and we got more on the way, love it. Boom! It's like free modular frames, that's what it feels like. <laughs> Even though it took me so long. Alright, so this belt's just going to be traveling straight along here. And then it's going to get fed into its respective bros. Um, so let me see. You want to go in there, don't you? Um, Alright, well. It's got to be split evenly between these. And it's in the center here. It's going to go like that. Yeah, so I guess we'll just follow it along and then just raise it at the end. So right to about there. And then up you go. Into your little buddy. Feed this across, so we have to give it its lifts, and then we have to feed the casing in from the opposite direction. Mark 1 belt should be more than enough for this. Now, just to keep a little bit of consistency, it doesn't necessarily need a splitter, but I usually like to do that. Just so that it's kind of the same as this side. In fact, um, yeah, I don't need that. Get rid of that. All right, and there we go. We are hooked up. All right, so um, yeah, the casing has to come in from the other side, and then that's basically the final ingredient that has to go anywhere. So here we have the two batches of casing. And they're going up to a third slot, and that's the input. And each one is going to divide into these, so we have two separate belts. Uh, I might fly for this one, actually. It's a little awkward. It's nice doing this kind of rolling start. It means our belts are filling up before, like, you know, they have to go to the machine. So that'll help kind of get things moving a bit quicker. I have to do the outputs as well, I, I guess. Yeah, so I might try to tidy this up myself just a little bit because I'm not a fan of the way it's staggered. Nothing else is staggered like that in this entire factory, but it is the way it is. All right, so next up, the elevator lifts. All right, so Mark II elevator. We'll do this really quickly. Alright, so all of the output mergers are hooked up. We just need to hook them up to each other, and that is it. So, hmm. Best way to do it, let's say if we get you and we stack a merger on this area, and we send it out that way. And we've got a lovely little merger down here. Yeah, I think this will work. So we're going to send some of the fused frames out that way. And then ultimately, I guess we'll have to put down a stackable pole here, too.
Nice. So now we've got fuse frames on top and on bottom, which is a little strange, but what I'm thinking is if we get an industrial storage box pretty much right here, or wherever we plan, well, it's obviously going to go down to a train station in the future, but just for now we can stick it there, pop that in this way, pop that in this way, boom, in we go. If this turns to a smart splitter, we can then set overflow to go this way, and that way our 16 will get consumed by these machines, and any overflow, it'll take a long time to overflow, but we'll go the other way and start filling up another box. So I don't know if I've got what I need for a smart splitter, but it'd be nice just to pop that into position right now. Let's see. Yes, I have AI limiters with me. I was worried I didn't. So we'll just change this belt. In you go. So overflow to the right. Just leave that as is. All right, so modular frames will go that way. Heavy modular frames, that is. I'll just reconnect this just in case. Okay. So this will be fused frames, or should be, and this will be excess heavy modular frames. And in total, we should have 20 heavy modular frames left over and 16 fused frames. So the last thing to do is to turn on these blenders, turn on the gas valve, and make sure that this start place starts churning. We've seen the heavy modular frames have been moving up. It's going to run down, flick on the gas valves, and then we should be good to go. I don't know which one it is, actually. We don't need all three, but we only need one. <laughs> but I'm not sure which one it is, so we'll just turn them all on. Let them fill their pipes. Alright, we can see that expanding now. Okay, very last thing then is just to actually head upstairs. If these blenders aren't on already, then we'll turn them on and that should be it. So what do we got? We have an issue here. This wasn't connected. That'll be the last little bit of steel pipage that we need. They're all producing now together. Simultane Look at this! The sea of green lights and yellow lights to be fair. What's wrong with you? Too many. Okay, that's a good problem to have. Just means that something wasn't consuming it yet. Probably the heavy modular frames. All right, here we are then. You've got everything you need. Why aren't you producing something? You're out of concrete. Ooh, we'll have to check on what's going on with these. There's so much like little diagnostic issues. This one, for instance, has 500. So, uh, but this is out of pipes. That's really weird. This has pipes that's out of concrete. Yeah, something's wrong with the belt, obviously. So we'll check that. Nice to solve these little issues. All right, let's just turn this on there. The gas is flowing. They're taking in their heavy modular frames. They're taking in their aluminum casing. 75 per minute. That's the modular frame one. That's Mark II belt, 75 per minute. That should be fine. Excellent. All right. I kind of want to see these turn on because I've just, I've never seen it before. It's safe to stand on top, right? Oh. We're blending. Yes! <laughs> awesome. Alright. Oh, cool. You can actually see the little things being made. Excellent. Fused modular frames. Well, we'll check that in a second. We gotta diagnose what the issues are with the heavy modular frame machines. So this row doesn't have any steel pipes, but it does have concrete and then the other one doesn't. So it seems like the, the lifts might be the issue then. Because it's like the line is getting it but the lifts might not be carrying things up. Yeah, so here we have a Mark III belt of steel pipes going in, and this is not getting what it needs. Hmm. So it said it needed to be a Mark II. Connecting it there, snapping it in, and there we go. Yeah, I don't know, just a little issue. Next one over that had the same problem is this one. Mark I belt. Looks like I've done a little mistake here. This belt is not connected correctly, or... This one isn't. We'll just check on that. Mark II belts. Looking at the splitter, not the conveyor. Connect that. There we go. We're flowing again. So that was just probably a little logistical error on my part. It seems like I've done the same here. I did purposely look at the splitter, not the conveyor thing to make sure that worked. But yep, looks like we're good. We're golden. 
I'm seeing rising belts everywhere. All right, let's. Oh, there she is, fused modular frame, looking good, looking thick. Give me that one, bonk. <laughs> There it is. A corrosion resistant nitride nitride hardened highly robust yet lightweight modular frame. All right, that's what it's all been for. So let's just do one last little tour of this place now that it's all up and running. The end product is here. We've already made 10, believe it or not. Now the consistency or efficiency will probably drop a bit until the belts get flooded by the things that they need. And then in the future, I still want to fix up this factory to send these things down to train station. I want to build a control room. I'm not done here yet, and we got to make the place look good. And then we'll move on to another one after this. Sun is beginning to set again though, but there we go. And yeah, I, I'm not sure what kind of back wall I'm going to put next to this. So there's going to be an empty belt here and another one on that end. That's actually the way I've designed it. They're reserved for other things as well. So yeah, that belt and that belt are going to be empty. Actually, none of these should be empty. This is two casing, three gas. That's steel pipes. That's reserved for maybe radio control units or something. Then we've got the industrial encased beams, the modular frames. Yep, good. And then it's reserved and that's uh, concrete. All right, if we hop down another floor. How do you like that? <laughs> Looking good. I'm seeing stuff flowing everywhere, which is the important thing. And then when I leave this running for a while, we can check on some of the efficiencies and see did I do a good job. Whenever I see belts and stuff going like this, I always think of the South Park episode where it's cash for gold. I don't know if people know that. But the guy's like singing along. I think Matt Stone and Trey Parker literally just made up their own tune for it. Where they're going like... And then it just gets like more and more aggressive <laughs> as it goes. And then by the end, they're like... Anyway, you kind of have to see it to get it. <laughs> I'm not probably doing it justice. But it, it's like a joke that builds up over the course of five minutes. And it starts off really tame, where it's just like... <laughs> and then the more complex things get. And the longer it goes on. Anyway, <laughs> got to put that soundtrack into the game. Um, all right, I think we're kind of done then, aren't we? We're making our fused frames. Things look like they're flowing pretty well. Is there any other floors for me to check? That was the assembly floor. We have this floor down here, I guess. This is the one that's really mental. We're bringing in all the um, raw materials. I don't really have anywhere to stand while looking at this place. Can I? I'd, I'd probably be able to float here. Yeah. See, there's no power on this floor, but there's power above. Wow. I can't believe it's all full of stuff. <laughs> For the longest time I've been looking at this and it's just always been empty. And now we have like just so much stuff flowing along. But there we, oh yeah, there's nothing in there. This will have the overflow. Oh my God, they've actually got overflow already. How the hell does that work? Or is it not work? Oh, I know why. <laughs> Whoops. Left output says nothing. I was thinking that didn't make any sense. <laughs> All right, they'll go the right way now. I'll take these. I'll just put them back in here and then they'll flow into the machines correctly again. So there we go, you should have a consistent flow now heading into these machines. My bad. <laughs> still though, we actually still made 70 fused modular, 70. 
Hell yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> really good. Nice. Feeling damn good about that. Uh, so yeah, I guess the last thing we could check is this is at 100%. Hundo percento. Let's just check the ones on the end because those would be the ones that would probably be the, the weakest. 52. So it's going to take a while for this to kind of build up. But uh, I'll keep this running for a little while, and then in the next episode we can check on it, look back on it, and see how everything's running. And I'll tell you if I've missed anything else, but very happy with the results so far in terms of how many of these we're making per minute. The casing, the gas, that's no problem at all. And the modular frames were a little bottlenecked by me just a second ago, so for the most part we should be totally fine. Alright guys, that's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry if it was a bit disconnected, running back and forth between all the floors, but there it is. The fused frame factory and possibly soon to be that like plasma cube factory or whatever if we ever bring in the radio control units from over there. We can just about see them actually. <laughs> They're pretty close by in terms of a train lane or a train railway so wouldn't be too hard. Alright that's gotta be it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. everyone thank you so much for watching the video consider liking it if you enjoyed it subscribe for more and if you want to support even further consider becoming a channel member channel members get early access to my videos ad free and also access to my discord where we've just set up a new valheim and satisfactory server for people to play on hopefully we can grow a community and add more games and perks in the future either way i appreciate people just watching this far into the video thank you